On behalf of the Vermont Association of Conservation Districts, we'd like to thank you for viewing this DVD. This video on mortality composting is being distributed by the Vermont Association of Conservation Districts as an instructional tool for farmers in Vermont. Animal mortality composting is a safe, inexpensive, and simple way of dealing with downed animals no matter when or where they occur. This technique is adaptable to many different farm animal operations. It creates a rich end product that can be applied to the land as a soil amendment. In this video, we'll talk to some Vermont farmers already using the process and look at how they've made it work on their farms. Then we'll take you on a step-by-step -step technical walk through the composting process. Remember, though this process is simple, it is important to pay attention to the details. If you run into problems or have any questions, there are a number of organizations ready and willing to help you along the way. For assistance, feel free to call your local conservation district. I just know that it works. I, I put a carcass in and I do my best to keep the nutrients that that carcass is going to provide locked up. It makes use of materials that you can't otherwise use or you've got to find a place to get rid of them. I mean, you take round, if anybody feeds round bales and they, you know, if they spoil or whatever, what are you going to do? You just throw them in the bushes somewhere or whatever. You just let them rot down on their own or especially with us with the carcasses now that we've got a way of taking care of our dead cows or dead calves. You know in the grand scheme of things it's just a recycling process that that actually takes farm grown nutrients, converts them into uh, proteins, carbohydrates and minerals and puts them back on the soil. The Vermont Association of Conservation Districts houses the conservation districts and is organizing the conservation districts for the state of Vermont. The conservation districts were formed in the 30s and 40s um, by farmers for farmers, basically to serve as a farmer advocate, the go-between to be the collectors of information for farmers and to also help organize what needs to be done legally by farmers on their farms. If we could get this video to go out and show some of those issues and, and make an awareness to people, I think that's probably our biggest goal at this point right now. There are a, a variety of methods of disposal um, available to farmers. Uh, the four methods include on-farm composting as we're discussing, um, livestock burial, calling a rendering truck and having the animal hauled to a rendering facility, and uh, what's called dragging the animal back in, out into the back 40. The typical method for dealing with a dead cow or a few dead cows for a farmer was to drag it out to the back 40 and let it lie, basically just leaving it to rot. That's not really a, a good managed method of disposing of livestock uh, for a lot of these reasons, for water quality, but also for luring predators and spreading diseases. And with the number of people that we have out in the woods, whether it's the neighbor's kids, uh, hikers, whoever else, hunters, um, they really don't really appreciate coming across rotting carcasses out in the woods. The most dangerous approach to managing a livestock mortality is generally considered to be that of dragging the animal into the backwoods or into the back 40 for the coyotes to eat. And the, the main reasons for this is because that animal is left there as a disease vector potentially, uh, as well as for its potential to leach into unknown groundwater sources below the, the site uh, and nearby uh, surface waters. From that decomposition process, bacteria and nutrients are the main things that, that are released as the, the carcass decomposes. And those things can be transported both down into the soil, and if it goes down, it can ultimately reach groundwater, and it can run off into our surface waters. So depending on, on where that animal is placed, what kind of soils it's placed on, those pollution impacts can be pretty serious because we have a lot of dead animals in this state.
as rendering costs have increased and disposal costs have increased, farmers are left with few options for managing livestock mortalities. We basically can't get a renderer to come to this area. Um, and uh, we're sort of out of the loop of, of a real, as, as far as a real core of dairy uh, farms, so uh, they d do not come to this area to pick up uh, mortalities. I have some serious doubts whether that service will even be available in the next 10 years. Um, I, you know, if it is, it will be at a cost that I think would be, would be unbearable for our small processing facilities. I suspect the costs are going to continue to increase particularly in parts of the state where there aren't as many farms mm -hmm. and the renderers aren't through that area as often, it's going to cost them more money to get around to individual farms okay. and that cost will get passed on to the farmer. Bringing an animal back in a pasture um, is also a, a common practice, um, however it's practice that's only seasonally available to farmers um, for anywhere from four to six or seven months of the year, um, with the winter being a very difficult time to actually achieve burial. After a few years of trying to bury carcasses on in heavy clay soils, and particularly during the winter, I, I just, you know, it, it, it was obvious we had to do something different. There are now some pretty serious restrictions on where you can bury it, because you dig a hole in August this month, and you can dig a pretty deep hole, place an animal in it, cover it up. However, in April, when the water table, there's a lot of water in the ground, the water table is up, that animal is sitting in a puddle of water. And that's obviously, that's right in your groundwater. So all those impacts are happening to your groundwater. The composting process is built around the habits of the microorganisms that we use to leverage um, and effectively break things down. The farmer needs to be aware of um, mixing in the correct ingredients and layering the, pop the pile appropriately so that actually air can get into and help the bacteria that are in the soil properly compost the animal. Most of the, the resources that are required of composting are available on the farm. Um, as you suggested, the, the round bales or the spoilage from the bunker silo, they all make great bulking agents for the composting process. It's killing off the pathogens and it's recycling all the nutrients. And that, from a water quality concern, is some of the, the greatest benefit because you're not releasing pathogens out of that.